Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Soundbox video and today we're going to be checking out another one of your guys' solar systems. Today's system is from the user the first is a Manian person, I hope I'm saying that right. And their system is called the uh, Amaterasu system. Amater, Amaterasu system? So that fair ado, let's go ahead and check it out. It's in the save files this time. Yeah, not a workshop today, so here we go, I've got a regular simulation. So let's go ahead and see what they have prepared for us. Right, there we go. I think we need to open it again to get the menu to prompt. Come on, menu. If you're going to open, come on. It's always weird how it opens slower the second time. There you go, there's our description. That's what we want. Okay, so here we are. Oh, it's a bit weird when the... It's always weird when the game does that. Oi, it's going to open again. It's always... It's... Why is it cover the side? It's so bizarre. But there we go, we'll be having this menu probably open anyway. So, a matter... Rash... A matter two system? Where the primary star is obviously this star. Yep, the matter is all. It has 13 planets and two stars, which also have planets. Okay, ah, Amarasso. Okay, I wasn't too far off. Amara, Amarasso. Ama, Amaterasso. There we go. Close enough. <laughs> right, so it's roughly uh, 400, 600 million years old. K3 IV type subgiant, around 15 light years from Earth. It has a mass 2.68 times greater than our sun and 13.3 times its size, as well as 93 times its energy output. So that's your luminosity there. Okay. It was a B-type main sequence star that expanded after exhausting its hydrogen, su hydrogen supply. Okay, so it's an aging star here. Mm, okay. Right. So the first of the planets. Here it is. Looking pretty hot. Herfaestus. It's the first planet from um, the star. Due to its close proximity, it's tidally locked, meaning one side permanently faces the star. Its surface features a lot of craters similar to Mercury. In around 80 million years, it will be destroyed um, when it expands into the red giant. Okay. Cool. Right, that's good stuff. Obviously, that's going to be quite the brightest view. Yeah. Nice. Next up, we are heading to. Here we go. Cephalans. Even I can say that one. Right. It's the second planet. A day is shorter than a year. Its surface is uh, somewhat um, like the other planet. It will be destroyed along with the latter in around 18 million years due to the evolution of the star. Very nice. So there you go. Red hot view, of course. Still, the goggles on, you're going to get quite the bright view. Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah. So there you go. Very nice. So got a little probe here as well. Very nice. Then we have a Barry Center set here the third planet out well okay. oh hello oh the simulation's actually playing as well i didn't even notice nice there you go yeah get a nice look at that yeah cheeky little barrier center going on here right so the third and fourth planets well uh so this is uh rajin which is that one would be considered a moon otherwise the barrier center between the two is outside of uh Ashiman, making this a binary planet system they are also both tidally locked to each other. This is possibly one of the most unique of the rocky planets. You know, having the duo there. Pretty cool. Yeah, very nice. Oh, what's that red thing in the distance? Ugh. Okay. So moving on. We're heading to Hecate over here. Looks like a Venus-like world, or is this a... Ooh, it's got a lot of things going around here. What's this? Hecate. Okay, it's spelled way different to how I thought I would say. Right. It's the fifth planet and the densest, being over six times as dense as water. It has a thick atmosphere composed of mostly carbon dioxide that has an atmosphere pressure about 100 times of Earth, making it a barren venus like world. It has a spherical moon. Okay, so, okay, so these are probes. Okay, okay, two, Lucifer. There you go. Cool. The moon the other one. What's the bigger moon then? Helios. Nice. Hyperion. We've got more here. There's a large moon. Ooh, that's looking pretty interesting. Ooh, what is going on here? Okay. It's the largest moon. Its unusual orange colour has been questioned by the Izamanians, and an unknown dense material was found underneath the orange crust. Very nice. 188 Celsius there. We're still in the uh, wrath of the star's power. Yep. Right, next up we have the Earth like world. Ooh. Izanami. There you go. The planet with an Earth-like condition shoots its high albedo, which happens due to the material or minerals in its oceans, 
and the plants having some sort of high reflectivity. While the temperature on the oceans are quite hot, the surface temperature on land is usually cold. It has one moon, Cassidy. It may or may not have an advanced civilization. Very nice. Very nice. 32 Celsius. Looking good. Very, very nice. Using the Venus texture. Has the moon yet? There's Cassidy. The only moon being tidally locked has a cra large crater like Mimas. The temperatures of the moon are much hotter than the planet. 100 Celsius. There you go. Cool. Alright, so moving to Achilles here. What do you say this? Pronounced Achilles. Yeah, Achilles. Yeah. So, there it is. It may not have a sword but it sure does have a shield Achilles has a power magnetic field somewhat like the other one has vegetation water on it though this one is much cooler it has one moon okay let's have a look at the uh... there you go yeah, the shield and where's your shield moon over here Ernatuma. there you go the only moon has a thin oxygen atmosphere, along with that, the surface is covered in iron oxide and small pockets of water. Based on these conditions, it likely suffered the same fate as Mars. You can see the clouds on it. Very faint old world there, eh? Hmm. What surface texture? That's Titan, isn't it? That's the Titan texture. Is that Titan and Sedna, maybe? Titan and Mars. Okay. That's a good combo, actually. I like that. That looks cool. A bit of patches of ocean on it. Well, lakes. <laughs> there you go. Very good. Moving on from Achilles. Where are we? Cerberus. Gas world. Okay, ooh. Let's get some Saturn vibes here. There they are, okay. Looking good. The most massive planet, although it's not the largest in size, it has a ring system somewhat like Saturn and multiple moons. So, Cerberus below moons are uh, Celestia. The closest moon to Cerberus. Where are we? Achilles. There he is. In under the rings. There you go. Nice view here. Definitely a nice view here. You can see that. Maybe this will be our thumbnail. Let's have a look. Looks like a good view. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I like that. Let's try and get a better view. A lot of surface views for thumbnails. So we're just trying to... Oh, we're moving as well. There you go. Yeah, that's more like it. Yeah. Looks good. Got a unique view actually under the rings like that. Pretty cool. Uh, we can enjoy the uh let's enjoy the view. So there we go. Cool. It's the most massive planet. So it's the closest moon. Due to proximity, it is superheated to a temperature of 74 Celsius. It is the most frequent cause of solar eclipses on surface. Yeah, I'm not surprised. That's yeah, quite close, isn't it? There you go. Nice. Let's go speed up a bit. Crossing across it. There you go. Very cool. Nice. So, the second moon is called Lunaria. Um, like its moons, it's tidally locked. However, it has its own magnetic field. It's basically just a colder and fun-sized Earth. It uses tidal heating to stay warm. Very cool. Okay. So let's, where, where is that next moon? Oh, where are we? There he is. Tidal heating to stay warm. Look at that. Very nice. Looking good. Yeah, looks nice. Very cool. And this one has a magnetic field as well, didn't it? Go. Got the protection it needs. So Gutierrez, we can jump over here. Third or fourth, depending on its position. It has the most eccentric orbit out of all the moons, and it's the smallest of the four guardian moons. It has a free-two spin orbit resonance similar to monolith. Monolith. We got uh, Regala. Fourth. It's the largest of the four guardian moons and the largest moon of the Cerberus overall, being larger and more massive than Mercury. It stands and the others have an extremely high inclination. Let's have a look at that. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. And then Monolith, last of the moons. Small little guy. Smallest and furthest moon, barely even in hydrostatic equilibrium. Uh, there is really nothing special about this moon, right? Except for the fact it kind of resembles the Death Star. Oh, is it like a madness? I don't see the crater. Where is it? 
interesting. Either way, still has the Death Star look. There's a somewhat big crater there. There you go. Cool view of the planet from behind as well. There you go. Yeah, resembling Saturn a lot, isn't it? Actually, how massive was the planet? Size of Jupiter. That's a pretty big deal. Yeah, radius mass is a big thing. But it did say it wasn't the largest planet uh, for size. It said it was the most massive. So what is next then? There you go, Cassie. So what is what is this? So next next planet out. This world's even bigger, but less massive. There you go. Also a ringed world. Casey. Yeah, largest moon in terms of size. It hosts its largest moon as well. Nice. So we've got Reed first up over here. Closest moon it is less than half size of our moon and 12.6% its mass. Its surface features a significant amount of fallings. Getting that red look going, yeah. There you go. Very nice. We have Timmer. Second moon, its surface features frozen nitrogen and small amount of ice, although its surface is dominated by frozen nitrogen every now and then. Very nice. John Doe. I don't know anything about Roblox, I have to say, but there you go. Usually given to like an unidentified person, a John Doe. There you go. Right. Interesting. Oh, it's the largest moon. It's not counted. It's technically. Oh, the binary planet system. It's larger than Mars. It has an infinite amount of fallings and a small amount of ice. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Very good. Dujin. Ice giants. Uranus vibe from this. Quite a nice looking ice giant, actually. Being somewhat larger than Neptune, it only has one major moon, which is here. 0.3 Earths in size, please. It's named after Ted Puget due to its thick atmosphere, mostly CO2, extremely strong. The moon is extremely hot at a temperature of 250 Celsius maximum. The extreme temperature combined with the thick atmosphere makes it severe weather conditions. But this far, around an ice giant. You've got a Venus esque world around an ice giant. Quite a unique uh, duo there. Eleven planet. Its surface is covered in a solid crust of sulfur dioxide, ammonia, and argon. Beneath this frozen crust are large oceans made of sulfur dioxide and argon. This planet has a thin atmosphere of all three elements mentioned. It's the most massive rocky planet in the system. 1.15 radius of Earth, 1.76 mass of Earth. Nice. We have gaze over here. Felt the most massive. Developed most elongated orbit with its affiliation extending. Past the Oises. The Lone Wolf. Has an infinite twinkle. <laughs> Being a bit smaller than we have there. It's nothing special about gazing twinkle. So why is this in the description? Ah! <laughs> Need to mention them, right? There you go. Right. So the 13th and furthest planet. Here it is. Another ice giant. Still receiving light, though. It's got a ring system as well. There you go. Small one. It's currently the furthest planet. It gets little to no light. Smallest the gas swirl. The planet's been on border. What's considered a gas dwarf and a gas uh, a gas giant and a gas dwarf. It has a small ring system, very faint. There we go. Less massive than Neptune and Uranus as well. Very far away. Look at that orbit. There we go. In the depths. Survive definitely will survive the, the giant phase of the star though. Right, so next up we've got five these over here. So what's this? What's another star system further out in orbit the main star? So we've got a few planets around here. M3 main sequence. Okay, nice little red dwarf chilling out here. Very good. There you go. First of the planets. Closest planet, and it's between the size of Mars and Mercury. It's tidally locked and mostly barren. Very good, very good. Okay. Why these two? Second planet. 54% of the planet is made from iron, making its densest uh, planet that orbits. Very good. Three. Final planet. It appears to have low albedo and a strong greenhouse effect. Unusual. The vegetation on it is black due to Fides being a red dwarf. It's essentially another Earth. Interesting. There you go. It's pretty dark here though. Got just about receiving the light and temperature. There you go. Red dwarf in the distance. There's your view. Quite the faint star, isn't it? There you go. Nice. Has a moon as well. 
Could we consider the Super Europa having a thick crust made of ice and a subsurface structure while being twice the mass of our moon? That's very cool. Okay. Alright, there you go. And then lastly, Susanu over here. K6 V type star orbiting about 0 0.3 light, uh, light years. It has three planets. So, yeah, quite the distance of this star. Okay. Nice. There is no description for these planets. I'm guessing we've already run out of space. But there we go. So, we'll try and describe it ourselves so we can see. Hot rock, 193 Celsius. It has red patches. Now, what are those? Is that a specific material or is it just the colour? I think it's just the colours. Yeah, so it's got mysterious red crater areas. There you go. Okay. So it's Perseus. Next up, we've got Wyvern. So we can see it is a... Looks to be... Um, is that going to be an Earth-like underneath? A lot of water. It looks like an atmosphere of water vapour here. That blue. 112 Celsius. What's underneath? So it's a hot ocean. So it's a, green it's a greenhouse world. But not of water. That is liquid methane and liquid ammonia going on there. Interesting. Liquid hydrogen. Yeah. That's an interesting mix of stuff. There you go. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was like a gas dwarf kind of thing going on there with the hydrogen, especially. Interesting. And one more planet. Venu. That is scaly in the dark. Secret gas giant, 10.5 Earth masses, cold, and it's blue. Deep blue. Very nice. All of in 0 0.3 light years from the main star. Very nice. Good stuff. So going back to the main star, of course, this will be a red giant at some point, won't it? The uh, yeah, that's going to engulf a lot of stuff. Once that gets really bright, I mean, yeah, things are going to get warmed up a lot. Very, very cool. But yeah, that will send them. Um, maybe do a sequel of this with the Red Giant version. That'd be cool. But yeah, I enjoyed that. It was a nice system. Yeah, very, very good. So again, a massive thank you to the first uh, is a minion person for uh, sending this in. Hope I got your name right. I enjoyed that. It was a nice system. Yeah, I'll be keen to see if you did like a future part two of the Red Giant version of this system. I think that'd be quite cool. See how all the worlds change. I'd, yeah, I'd, I'd like to see that. Um, if you want to make it, yeah, that'd be cool. But yeah, that was then done, everybody. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to press that like button. Make sure to hype the video as well, as it really, really helps the channel out a lot, everyone. I appreciate everyone who's been doing it already as well. I've had a few people say they've done it. Really, really appreciate it. it means that the absolute world. And also subscribe for more. Help us on the journey to 60,000 subscribers as well. We're making good progress from 50 to 60, or 50 to 51, I should say. Um, yeah, we're already uh, almost at 51 already. So yeah, appreciate your support. And yeah, that was then done, everybody. Make sure you guys all have a great day. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.